Something is happening on Enceladus. Something is happening on Enceladus. This tiny, ice-white moon orbiting the magnificent ringed planet Saturn was once thought to be a quiet, frozen ball of rock and ice. It sits far from the sun's warmth, a mere speck in the cosmic dark. For centuries, it was just another point of light in our telescopes. But then we looked closer. We sent a robotic emissary to fly by, to listen and to see. And what it found sent a shockwave through the scientific community. A whisper of a secret, carried on plumes of water vapor, has traveled across the solar system, inviting us to solve one of the greatest mysteries of our time. Imagine a world smaller than the state of Texas, covered in a brilliant shell of ice that reflects sunlight like freshly fallen snow. It looks pristine, still, and utterly lifeless. Yet, from deep beneath that frozen crust, something is trying to get out. This small moon is not dead. It is geologically alive, and its activity offers a tantalizing hint that it might be biologically alive as well. The implications are profound, stretching our understanding of where life can take hold. The initial discovery was almost accidental, a beautiful anomaly spotted by a machine programmed to observe. It was a moment that transformed our view of the outer solar system. Suddenly, the cold, dark depths beyond Mars were no longer just a gallery of frozen, static worlds. They became a frontier of active, dynamic places where the conditions for life might exist right now, today. Enceladus became a prime target in our search for extraterrestrial life, a place where we might find answers to the age-old question, are we alone? Our story's hero is a spacecraft named Cassini. A sophisticated car-sized robot, Cassini spent 13 incredible years orbiting Saturn, revolutionizing our understanding of the entire system. It was on a flyby of Enceladus in 2005 that it witnessed something spectacular. As the probe soared past the moon's southern hemisphere, its instruments detected something strange. The moon was spraying material into space. Great geysers, or plumes, were erupting from long cracks in the ice, which scientists poetically named tiger stripes. These plumes shot hundreds of miles into the void, forming a faint, misty halo around the moon. At first, scientists were baffled. What could be powering such energetic jets on such a small, cold body? The answer had to be liquid water. The plumes were like a fire hose, blasting a fine mist, water vapor, ice crystals, directly from a subsurface reservoir. This was our first clue. The existence of liquid water was practically a certainty. Cassini had stumbled upon an active world, venting its hidden secrets into space. Cassini didn't just look, it tasted flying through the plumes with instruments that analyzed their chemistry. Where was all this water coming from? The sheer volume and persistence pointed to something much larger than pockets of melted ice. Cassini's gravity and wobble data confirmed a breathtaking hypothesis. Enceladus harbors a global ocean of liquid water, a rocky core, a global ocean, a thick outer ice shell with plumes erupting from the South Pole. The ocean is sandwiched between the moon's core and its shell, a dark, sunless sea, potentially holding more water than all Earth's oceans combined. The ice shell insulates the ocean. It is kept liquid by tidal heating. Imagine squeezing a stress ball. It warms up. The same thing happens to Enceladus. Gravitational kneading heats the rocky core, warming water from below powering spectacular geysers that breach the surface and sample the hidden world. Multiple lines of evidence, gravity anomalies, libration, show the shell is decoupled and floating on a global liquid layer. We see a warm, rocky seafloor beneath a global ocean, liquid water, a source of energy, key ingredients for habitability, in a world whose surface is minus 200 degrees Celsius, and yet is warm and dynamic below. Finding water was just the beginning. The truly astonishing discovery came when Cassini's instruments analyzed the plume's chemical makeup. 
They found more than just water ice. A rich cocktail, carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, and a variety of organic molecules. Organics contain carbon. On Earth, they are the building blocks of life. What you, me, the trees, every living creature are made of. But organic does not mean life. These molecules can form through non-biological processes. Still, their presence is a prerequisite, like flour, sugar, and eggs for a cake. Enceladus has these raw materials in its ocean and ejects them into space for us to find. We see both simple and more complex organics, compounds that on early Earth may have led to the first self-replicating organisms. Their presence strongly suggests they are generated within the ocean itself, an active chemical factory operating today beneath the ice. The ocean of Enceladus is not a sterile pool. It's a chemically rich soup. Along with Earth, Mars, and Europa, Enceladus enters the rare club with the trifecta, liquid water, essential elements, and energy, making it one of the most compelling places to search for life. A habitable world needs more than water and organic molecules. It needs energy. On Earth, most life gets energy from the sun through photosynthesis. But in the deep oceans far from sunlight, ecosystems thrive around hydrothermal vents. Microbes use chemical reactions for energy, a process called chemosynthesis. Could something similar be happening on Enceladus? The evidence points to yes. Cassini's final plume dives found molecular hydrogen. That simple gas is a free lunch for some microbes. On Earth, hydrogen forms when hot water reacts with rock at hydrothermal vents. Hydrogen in Enceladus's plumes suggests similar vents in its ocean. This is the smoking gun for an energy source. Hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide could fuel methanogenesis, an ancient microbial pathway. Cassini detected hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and methane, a powerful hint. Review. A vast ocean of liquid water, essential organic building blocks. A plausible energy source from hydrothermal vents producing hydrogen. Together, these point to an environment well-suited for microbial life. Enceladus provides the necessary components. The question is whether life has used them. Let's step back and see the whole picture. Each discovery was remarkable. Together, they're extraordinary. Active geysers sourced from a global ocean, warmed by Saturn's tides, salty, chemically rich water, organics in the plume, energy from hydrothermal vents, this isn't speculation, it's a conclusion from years of Cassini data and analysis. The case for Enceladus as a habitable world is one of the strongest in the solar system. Deep beneath the ice, the environment may mirror Earth's deep-sea ecosystems, a self-contained, self-powered biosphere in a box. But signs of habitability are not proof of life. Non-biological chemistry could explain hydrogen and organics, we need to go back and look for direct evidence. Still, the potential is undeniable. This forces us to expand our imagination. Life might hide in the dark oceans of icy moons throughout the galaxy. Enceladus is a beacon of hope for a new class of habitable worlds. The puzzle assembled shows a tantalizing picture, one that demands a return. The cumulative evidence from Enceladus has created a paradigm shift in astrobiology. Focus is moving from Mars's dusty plains to the outer solar system. While Mars may have been habitable long ago, Enceladus is likely habitable right now. It's ocean warm and active today. Here we could find a second genesis, life that arose independently from Earth. Finding life here would answer, are we alone? With a resounding no. If life thrives in a sunless ocean a billion miles away, it may be common in the universe. Enceladus is special because it's accessible. The moon is doing the hard work for us. We don't need to drill. We can fly through plumes and analyze samples for life signatures. This new hope is grounded in data and fuels our oldest dreams of exploration. Cassini came for Saturn's rings and moons and stumbled upon a potential habitat in our backyard. The universe is full of surprises. Sometimes the greatest discoveries are the ones we weren't looking for.
this small, icy moon gives us a powerful reason to keep exploring. So, what comes next? Cassini has ended, but it left a roadmap. Scientists, engineers at NASA and other space agencies are designing missions with Enceladus as the primary destination. They're tailored to answer what Cassini could not. Is there life in that ocean? Next generation spacecraft will carry instruments to detect complex organics, amino acids, and other biosignatures, the chemical fingerprints of life. One leading concept, the Enceladus Orbilander. Orbit for years, fly through plumes, collect and analyze samples with unprecedented precision. Map the surface and identify landing sites. Then land near a tiger stripe, analyze freshly fallen plume material, and reveal ocean chemistry. But first, planetary protection is paramount. Spacecraft must be sterilized so we don't contaminate Enceladus with Earth life. These missions need investment and innovation, but the potential payoff is immeasurable. The story of Enceladus is a story of cosmic wonder, transforming a distant point of light into a world of possibility. It teaches that life's ingredients can exist in unexpected, hostile places. A hidden, warm, chemically rich ocean opens a new chapter in our search for place and purpose. We stand at a threshold, armed with tantalizing clues and insatiable curiosity. This small moon around a giant planet challenges us to think bigger. If Enceladus exists here, what wonders await among the stars? How many other icy moons harbor hidden oceans? The universe may be generous with habitable real estate. Life may not be confined to sun-warmed, earth-like worlds. Life can be resilient and tenacious, thriving in dark, cold depths. Our evidence is compelling, but still circumstantial. We found a habitable environment, not yet its inhabitants. Next steps require patience, ingenuity, and careful science. We must build on Cassini's legacy and send new explorers to follow the trail of water, organics, and energy. We must listen to what the plumes are trying to tell us. The truth waits, frozen in the ice and dissolved in a distant ocean. This quest is about more than finding aliens. It's about understanding ourselves. It's about life's nature and its ability to arise and persist. Every clue from this small moon brings us closer to answers. The universe has set a puzzle, written in water and chemistry. We look up with purpose, instruments and imaginations aimed at that tiny, bright moon. Is anybody home?